everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong. Due to the COVID-19 outbreak at the end of January in Hong Kong, our planned six-month biomarker test was delayed. We finally got the test done and here are our results. Firstly, we will reveal our data and compare the results we had to last year when we just began taking NMN and resveratrol. Please note that as I switch to my wife's clinic, there are some items for me which do not have comparison data. Other than the biomarker test, we also got a hair analysis this time. It seems that many of our audience are quite interested in the effect of NMN on hair. The items that were checked are hair loss status, hair density, keratin of scalp, hair thickness, hair pore status and cuticle status. It's our first hair test, so no comparative data. But based on this, we can see any changes in our next test, which is scheduled for six months from now. Secondly, we will explain some items briefly, especially those that might be affected by taking NMN or we thought would be of interest. Finally, we will talk about areas where we are concerned and what actions we're going to take to improve them. So here are our results. I will start with our blood markers, which are shown here. Let's dive into cholesterol in a little more detail. We are both in the reference range for all the cholesterol figures. For total cholesterol, I am 22% lower and my wife is 13% lower than last time. For HDL, I am 25% lower and my wife is 25% higher. Since HDL is the good cholesterol, I would like to get over 60 to be in the desirable range. For LDL, we are both 24% lower than last time, which is pretty good. We will aim to get to the desirable range, which is lower than 100 for this as well. As you may know, NMN is a form of vitamin B3, and according to the Mayo Clinic in the US, prescription B3 is used to increase HDL cholesterol, which helps to remove the LDL cholesterol from your bloodstream. My wife seems to have benefited from this, as she has increased her HDL by 25% and decreased her LDL by 24% in the 9 month period since starting with NMN. I have added the cholesterol ratio as well. This is an important biomarker for cardiovascular disease risk, where a level less than 4 implies a reduced risk. To calculate the cholesterol ratio, divide the total cholesterol by the HDL cholesterol. Now let's have a look at our triglycerides. We are both well below the 200 limit, though my number has got higher it is still within the range. Another of the benefits of B3 is that it can lower the triglycerides by 20 to 50 percent. My wife has seen a big improvement of 50 percent drop in triglycerides which may be from this effect. As we have the triglyceride in the HDL data we would like to talk about the TG HDL ratio which is another indicator for risks of heart disease. To get the TG HDL ratio Simply take the triglycerides and divide by the HDL. The closer to 1, the better. According to a study, the higher TG HDL ratios, around 3, had the highest incidence of heart attacks and strokes compared to those with the lowest ratio of around 1.1. I'm not bad at 1.37. My wife at 0.91 is close to 1, which is the optimal number. Next, fasting glucose. Again, we are both within range. I'm a bit lower than last time, but still towards the high end. My wife from her low of 57 jumped to 105. In fact, other than the effects from supplements, we must admit that during COVID-19, from the end of January, we were mostly at home. My wife is not a dessert person. She seldom eats cake or biscuits, but recently she has been having dessert more frequently. After her glucose level nearly doubled, she has tried to stop having dessert. I continue to do intermittent fasting by going one or two days a week without breakfast and lunch. I believe this helps keep my insulin sensitivity good and blood glucose levels down. We did take berberine for a while, but it gives us constipation, so we stopped it again. We will see if we can get metformin later. For uric acid, I was just a little bit out of range before, but my wife was 9.7. For women, the suggested range is between 2.6 and 6 so she was significantly out of range. As uric acid is a major contributor to gout, we were concerned about this. Luckily, this time, we are both down. I am 30% down and my wife is 42% down to 5.6, now within the range. For prevention of gout, we did listen to Dr. Axe's solution, which is taking celery seed supplement. It seems to be working. 
Now let's look at some markers for our liver and kidney health. For ALT and AST, I'm both within the range and my wife's AST is improving, but she is still higher than normal. For AST to ALT ratio, which is called the Doritis ratio, over 2 is a sign of alcoholic liver disease. We are both under 2. GGT or gamma glutamyl transferase is an enzyme that is found in many organs throughout the body with the highest concentrations being in the liver. GGT is elevated in the blood in most diseases that cause damage to the liver or bile ducts. A GGT level of 0 to 30 is normal and we are both within range. So our livers seem to be doing okay and well tolerating any side effects from the NMN that we are taking. If your kidneys aren't functioning properly an increased level of creatinine may accumulate in your blood. We are both in the normal range for a creatinine. Let's now take a look at our physical measurements. For blood pressure, we are both within the reference range. One thing I should mention is that we measure our blood pressure most days at home. My wife averages around 95 to 105 all the time, but when she goes to the clinic, she was always 30 to 40% higher. It could be that she is nervous. This does point to the benefit of having a blood pressure device at home. Because we check our pressure regularly, we are not worried about this one-time high number. Jumping down a little bit, our BMI and BMR appear fine. BMD is bone mass density, also called the T-score. This is not such a well-known metric. A T-score shows how much your bone density is higher or lower than the bone density of a healthy 30-year-old adult. As I am 59, it does not seem entirely fair to compare myself to a 30-year-old. Anyway, bigger than minus 1 is better. I am minus 1.7 and my wife is minus 1.1, both of which could be better. We have been taking D3K2 all along, so to help increase our bone density, we have added some calcium and magnesium to our supplement list. Having said that, if you saw our earlier videos, you will know that a one leg stand exercise seems a good way to maintain bone mass density as well. It is anecdotal, but there is a TV program in Japan where a lady in her 80s increased her bone mass based on doing a one leg stand exercise when she is washing her dishes every day. For body fat percent, we are in a good range. So visceral fat is based on the estimated amount of fat surrounding internal organs in the abdomen. 1 to 12 on the scale is indicated as the healthy level of visceral fat. I am 10 and my wife is 3. We have a new scale at home which shows my visceral fat is actually 4 and my wife is 2. So I am not concerned as I am at worst within range, if at the high end, but I am not sure about the measurement. If possible I would like to get it down more by eating less carbs and continuing with my intermittent fasting regimen. For muscle mass I am in the mid-range. My wife is slightly up by 2% but still a bit lower than the reference range. She's taking more protein now to help address this. Metabolic age is based on your basal metabolic rate, commonly known as BMR, in comparison to your height and weight. Interestingly, my metabolic age is the same as my biological age result from my DNA methylation test, which is 44 years old. For my wife, her metabolic age is 15 years younger than her actual age, and her biological age result is 10 years younger than her actual age. Finally, for our hair report. They use a hair analysis machine to detect your hair condition, which gives you 0 to 5 marks for different conditions of your hair. It shows details of the scalp and the hair condition. We are above average on hair loss, hair density and cuticle status, but for hair thickness and pore status, we need to improve. It seems they don't take account of your age in the report. So maybe it is best to compare our results in six months time to look for any improvement. We hope you found this video informative. If you do like the video, please do hit the thumbs up button. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending lifespan. Thank you for your kind support. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for notifications. We just finished our NMN sublingual method trial and will soon release the results. I wish you all well and I will speak to you again soon.